Now, we're turning to the Word of God this morning, please, to the book of Exodus. And we are coming to the book of Exodus this morning, chapter number 3, the book of Exodus. And we're turning to the book of Exodus, chapter number 3, please. The book of Exodus, chapter number 3, and we're going to commence reading from verse number 1. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse number 1, we read, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. You know, that was one of the first great lessons. That was the first great lesson Moses had to learn. And I think it's a great lesson for every child of God to learn this morning. And that lesson is the holiness of God. Do you remember in the book of Joshua, chapter 5 and verse number 15? You remember Joshua was talking to the captain of the Lord's hosts. And you remember what Joshua had to learn? Joshua had to learn the holiness of God. When the captain of the Lord's host said in Joshua, chapter 5 and verse 15, he said, Remove thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. And it says, And Joshua did so. See, it's good to learn of the holiness of God this morning. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1, you read these words. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. That means we must be conscious when we come to the house of God that God's holy presence is here. And the first lesson Moses was going to learn was of the holiness of God. And do you remember John in the Isle of Patmos? In the book of the Revelation, chapter 1, when he saw the risen, exalted, glorified Lord Jesus, it says he fell, as it were, dead at his feet. I think, you know, we all could do, and myself included, to get a fresh vision of the holiness of God. We continue on with our reading this morning. Verse 6, Moreover he said, I am the God of thy father, and the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, 
The cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, That's God. Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey, and they shall hearken to thy voice. And thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. And ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt, with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor, and of her that sojourneth in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptian. And Moses said, answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. There is a lesson for every child of God to learn. And there's a fact for every child of God to understand. And there is a truth for every child of God to come to terms with. That truth, that fact, That lesson is the importance of inadequacy. Nobody knows how important inadequacy is. 
because it is inadequacy this morning. It is inadequacy that strips us of self-confidence. It's inadequacy this morning that strips us, strips us of self-importance. And it is inadequacy this morning that strips us from our own ability. Inadequacy this morning. It's a very important thing because what inadequacy does this morning, it lets us see our own limitations. Inadequacy is important because inadequacy is the key that unlocks the door and allows us to go through with God. Self-confidence, self-importance, self-strength, self, self, self doesn't open that door. It only locks the door. But inadequacy opens the door and enables us to go through with God for whatever God wants us to do. I wonder this morning, child of God, do you see the importance of inadequacy? Great men and great women of God who were mightily used of God began to see themselves at the start as unfit and unable for the task that God was calling them to do. But no greater man in the Old Testament will you ever find that this was the case than with, with God's great servant, Moses. You see, in verse number 11, he, Moses says to God, Who am I that I should go? And you see, child of God, this morning, the importance of inadequacy is this. It sees our limitations, and it's an inadequacy this morning that calls us to cast our own selves upon God's strength and God's ability. The call, upon the, the call of God upon one's life this morning, make no mistake about it, is a very daunting and a very difficult experience. It's no light matter this morning when God calls you to a certain position or God calls you to some certain responsibility. It's no light thing. And normally when people get the call of God upon their lives, those people tend to run in the opposite direction. Moses got the call of God upon his life when he least expected it. It came without warning. It came suddenly. And when God singles out a person, do you know what God does? God calls you out of your comfort zone. God calls you out of your comfort zone, and God called you out of your depths. That's what makes the call of God so daunting this morning, because God will always call you out of your comfort zone, and God will always call you out into depths that's far beyond your limitations. God's call can come at any place. 
For Moses, it was at the backside of the desert. For Elisha, it was behind two twelve, sorry, behind a twelve yoke of oxen, Gideon, when he was threshing wheat at the wine press. The disciples, when they were in their boats. I want you to notice something about the call of God. Moses, Gideon, Samuel, even, the disciples. God came to them. It was never them who went to God. The call of God upon one's life is a very daunting, and it's a very difficult, and it's a very demanding thing. Because God calls you out from what you're comfortable with and brings you to a place that's completely out of your depth. But it's only when you obey the Lord, it's only when you plunge into those waters that are out of your depth that you'll ever really prove the grace of God. Poor Moses. Oh, he was putting the hands up already. He says, not me, Lord. Why should I go? Why should I do this great thing? Why me, Lord? Why me? Who am I that I should go? You see, child of God, this morning there may be someone in this meeting, and God has been speaking to you recently about something that He wants you to do. Or maybe in days to come, God may just come to you in a real way and show you as to what you must do. And God has given me this message to set you up for that moment, whatever that task may be. You see, there's first of all in this message that God has for us this morning, it begins with God and it ends with God and we have poor Moses in the middle. First of all, I want you to notice God's appearance. Because we see in verse number 2 that it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Forty long years, Moses was in the backside of the desert, he was. Away from the palace that he was brought up in. And here Moses was 40 years, and here he was in this desert place. I'm sure Moses, over those 40 years, wondered, wondered what on earth am I doing here? You remember Moses this morning. Moses was brought up in the palace of Pharaoh. He knew nothing, only riches. He knew nothing, only splendor. He knew nothing, only royalty for 40 years. 40 years he was in the palace. 40 years he was surrounded by riches, surrounded by glory, and surrounded by this great wonder of the palace. But he spent the next 40 years in the wilderness of a desert. You know, child of God, this morning, maybe you are in some place this morning that you're not used with. Maybe you find yourself in a place this morning that you're not comfortable with. Maybe this morning you're finding your place, and maybe this morning you're miserable. It's not something this morning, child of God, you're used with. It's not something maybe you were brought up with. And you feel this morning alone. And you feel this morning worthless. Poor Moses. Here he was this morning, 80 years of age, 80 years of age, 
in the desert. And it was here in the desert, without warning, without introduction, God appeared unto him. And God appeared unto him in a special way. Do you see when God appears to you, I'll tell you, you'll know it's God all right. When God reveals himself to you, you make no mistake about this, God, you'll know it's God all right. God appears unto Moses here in this desert place. Do you know, in spite of what we think this morning, God's timetable is always perfect. You see, as for God, His ways are perfect. And do you know, child of God, when I look at Moses in the desert, Moses was there for a purpose, to draw Moses away from himself. Sometimes God allows us into that desert place and brings us into that desert place not to build us, but to break us. God brings us into, us into the desert at times not to strengthen us, but to weaken us. Sometimes God brings us into a desert to really weaken us and to break us. Bring us to a point where we're no longer ourselves. God specializes in breaking and building. And God brings this man, Moses, and he finds him in the desert. Here he is now, this one-time mighty man. And here he's, he's lowered and he's brought down right to the very place where he's looking after a few sheep. You will think, here's a man this morning. What use is he now? God had to break him. God had to humble him. God had to bring him down to nothing to prepare him for the work that God had him for it to do. You see, child of God, this morning, it's not that you're strong enough. It's not that I'm strong enough that God can use. The problem is we're not weak enough. God says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And God calls to Moses. And God brings this out to Moses, and God brings this mission before Moses. And in verse 10, he says, Come now, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. God has singled him out. God has showed him his mission. Listen, child of God, be ready. God may single you out. And maybe this morning you're finding yourself in a difficult place. I don't know. The experience is not a nice one. The experience at this moment is an uncomfortable one. But listen, as, Moses knew, as God knew that Moses was in the desert, listen, he knows where you are this morning. He knows the problems. He knows that feeling that you're feeling. He, he knows all about how, what you're going through mentally. He knows what you're going through physically. God knows where you are, and God has a purpose for you being in that very place. God's appearing. And then we have Moses' arguments. He says, who am I that I should go? Let me make one thing clear this morning. Do you know what God delights in? Do you know what really delights God? Do you know what really pleases God? Do you know what makes God excited? What God delights in this morning is to use inadequate people. Inadequate people. People this morning who sees their self inadequate for the job. He says to, Mo, he says to the Lord, Moses says to the Lord, Lord, I can't go. Who am I? Who am I that I should go? 
Do I wonder this morning, child of God, do you feel, do you see your inadequacy this morning? Because inadequacy is important. God doesn't want this, you to see what you can do. God wants you to see what you cannot do. Because when you see what you cannot do this morning, you're the very person God is after. All God wants from you, child of God, is not your GCSE. All God wants from you this morning, child of God, is not your qualifications. All God wants for, from you to use this morning is your availability and your faith to trust Him. That's what God wants. Sometimes God passes people by because they're too important. Sometimes God passes people by because they're too self-confident. Sometimes God passes people by because they're too proud and they think they should be somewhere. But God passes them by. Oh, no, friend. Do you remember Jeremiah? Jeremiah complained to God that he was running for his life too. He says, Ah, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Do you remember Gideon? Gideon threw up an argument. He says, He said, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel before my, behold, my family is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's, in my father's house, Lord. Lord, who am I that you're sending me? Who am I that you're calling me? Great men of God see themselves inadequate for the job, but they're the very qualifications God is looking for in His children to be mightily used. And Moses, Moses begins to argue with God. Wonders of somebody this morning and you're arguing with God. You're arguing against God's call. You're arguing against God's way this morning. And you'll find out in this chapter and in the pre next chapter, Moses begins to rattle out every excuse. 3.11, who am I that I should go? 3.13, what shall I say? 4 verse 1, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice. Chapter 4 verse 10, I am not eloquent. I'm slow of speech. 4 verse 13, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. But don't send me, Lord. I can't do it. I'm not the man, or I'm not the person you're after, Lord. That was Moses' argument. But he was God's man for this mission. I wonder this morning, is God speaking? Or is God about to speak to some man, some woman, some young person in this tabernacle this morning? God has been speaking. God perhaps may will come in a day to come and going to call you to some task that He wants you to fulfill, and it's you He's after, after nobody else. Who am I that I should go? I had that argument with God myself. Three weeks leading up to my induction service almost put me over the edge. The thought of it. But you know what the problem was? The problem was just, I had the same problem with Moses. All I could see was me. All I could see was me. Those three weeks in our home, all I could see was me. All I could see was my inadequacy. I could never pastor a church. I could never do this. And the Lord made it clear that I was the man to come. 
But you know what my fault was? All I could see was me. And then I heard a wee voice one day that said this, I can do all things through Him who strengtheneth me. When I came to this tabernacle on the 12th of October, 19th of October in 2012, I was coming into something that was completely and utterly out of my depth. But I can tell you I am where I am today, and it's by the grace of God. Don't ever be afraid, child of God, to trust Him. This was Moses. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, 27, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the ways, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. All God wants you to do, child of God, is not to try and work it out, not to try and understand it, but to cast yourselves on the oceans of His grace. The importance of inadequacy is a great truth to come to terms with. When you see your own limits and you see this morning your own inadequacy, I can tell you now, child of God, you're the very person who's in the right place for God to take up. God delights in taking the inadequate people and the inadequate things. Because those who see themselves inadequate casts their all upon the Lord to see it fulfilled. Then we're going to finish with this one, God's adequacy. The next 40 years after this, Moses was going to learn a lesson that he never had learned before. Even though he saw himself as useless, inadequate, yet Moses was going to prove the grace of God that is there when we trust Him for the task that lies ahead. God made a promise, and this was the promise He made to Moses. Certainly, I will be with thee. He had every reason to trust God because of that promise alone. He had every reason to depend on God on that promise alone. And you have every reason to trust God this morning on that promise alone. From beginning to end, when you read through the story of Moses, time and time and time again, God was there for Moses. Because you see, God will never call you to do anything that His grace will prove insufficient. Poor Moses, incapable, weak, inadequate. Little did Moses know that those were the very qualification God looks for in a man or a woman 
that he's going to you. What we must realize this morning as what I have to realize, and I personally had to learn this from day one, you take one day at a time, and you take one week at a time, and God gives you the grace for one day. Never in a month of Sundays that I think I'd be still here in 2017. But I'm here. Because God eats day, God eats week, God eats month, God eats year has been with me and will continue to be so. Don't be afraid of your own inadequacy, but see it this morning as a qualification that God can use you. And this morning, if you find yourself in a difficult place, in a place that's not desirable at the moment, you see that as a place that God is training you for something that lies ahead of you. You don't know, I don't know what's on tomorrow, but I thank God my tomorrow are in his hand and his heart. The importance of an adequate. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. Our closing hymn is number seven hundred.